Hello everyone, it's me, Blader Dragon Sonic, back again with another round of the BDS Monopoly Formula World Championship. This time it's round 908, I need to fact check that. At, at Monza, for the Italian Grand Prix, unfortunately, I've lost footage of qualifying. What I can remember is Riley crashed out at the par Parabolica, and it seems to have been a brake failure. And like Charles Leclerc in 2020, that means he's starting from the back. Your top six is Jin, followed by its teammate Uche, then it's Chimera, then Rishab, then the two H3As of Simeon, then Josh. So let's head into that race then for the Italian Grand Prix. Now, another thing to mention is that the Ferraris, they're in yellow this time out. Why? Well, it's the home Grand Prix. What else do you want them to do? So, let's have the five red lights. It's... And it's a Mercedes one to his gens on pole well, for the first time in quite a while. Let's see what the two HWA cars can do from th on the third row as we go lights out and away we go in Italy. That's a pretty even start from the top two. 18 laps in this Italian Grand Prix to go side by side. There's pretty much everyone. And it's just closing in and ahead of his teammate before we even reach the first uh, chicane. In at the very end of hell. But uh, uh, Chima holding up from Rishab, the top six pretty much remain the same. But we've got a yellow flag in the first sector, and that's for a yarn. And Aaron Riley, who have come together at that first chicane. And Aeon, and then Joe has got a lot of damage from that. Your current championship leader there is struggling through that first chicane. In, but currently, Mercedes lead. With a 1-2, and Uche's already pulled out three seconds on his teammate. He's going to run away with this race faster than Riley did in, at this rate. But running on board with Riley, he's trying to slip and slide his way through the grid. And he's already up into 20th place ahead of the Red Bull of Charlie. The side by side as, he up, as Angela gets back into that fight. In for 20th place, almost hits the wall at the Scarry Chicane, and he's lost part of his front wing. So he's gonna have downforce problems. But that's not that much of an issue because you know this is it. This is Italy. You don't need that much downforce apart from that the parabolica, and he does peel into the pits at the end of the first lap. That's your championship leader there coming into the pits on lap two of 18. This will be a long race for the next TV Neo. As Uche now sets the fastest first sector of anyone. Seven seconds faster than the first sector he, he set last lap. We're riding on board with your race leader. Coming near the two less most uh, right-handers. In real life, they are your main breaking points, but not for overtaking. And that's coming up soon. Uh, Scotty, as he sets the fastest sector two of anyone as well. And Chima is actually following in close with Jun. And, but Simeon's been passed by his own teammate. And he's in a fight with Rishab and Josh over that uh, p uh, P4. And you can see through Parabolic is Josh. Josh wants to try and make a move, but he can't find it. Uche now sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Simeon trying to pull alongside his own teammate, and he's going to have DRS on the main straight, and he gets ahead of Josh. Up into P5, and a switcheroo for all the two HWA drivers. But in the background there, a yarn trying to get past Josh, and he does. It's a good move from the Toro Rosso driver. Just wondering if he can now make that... Stick through cover ground here. And he just about can. Look at the gap between your leaders here. It's pretty big. It's about 
Yeah, the entire length of the last most stands. That's your gap between your leaders. That is what five seconds looks like here in Italy. And Riley, he, he's struggling. He's not. He's not going faster than. And his target times, which would be about a one fourteen point five, he's going slower than that, which is an issue. But running on board with Alex, wow, he sent it up into P thirteen, a P yeah P thirteen there ahead of Gregory, he's Sebastian and Cal. As we begin lap four of eighteen, these laps are going to fly by. Yeah, it's the fastest track on the calendar. And he's, and we're riding on board with Sebastian now, who has been confirmed to be replaced. He's by Daniel. No, that's his teammate here, and he's going to be replaced by Daniel next season. And it has been confirmed that Angela is going to be replaced by Danny for uh, season six. Riley's really not setting these time screens alight. Uh, keep keep an eye on Arnav though. He's gonna have the best tie wear event of everyone, but at the same time, according to the predictor, the worst lap times of everybody, due to the fact that he's on the hard tires. We'll see what happens. And, oh, Kieran pulling one side at uh, Jommy. Yes, Jommy wants to try and take P18 if he can, but no. He gets covered off by that second McLaren. Who's now actually trying to go after on uh, the P18. He's in the slipstream. He's going to have to break a bit earlier to make sure he doesn't pile into the back of that Apex Grand Prix car. And yeah, Riley's an entire sector behind in Angela in 21st place. A whole sector at that point, I would have. But, and Alex has got a five second time penalty causing a collision. Now, I don't know what this could be referring to. That could have been a tag with uh, Sebastian or Gregory. I can't. I'm not able to tell. But that's going to be added on to his final race time. Not at a pit stop. The two Red Bull cars now trying to operate a switch in position with Charlie trying to take P16 from his teammate Callum. This does seem like it could be a bit of a fight and up into 16th place then goes Charlie with DRS. He's got 68% tire wear. Meanwhile, uh, Arnav is doing pretty well in 75%. If you want the soft tires right now, I'd say you'd need to pit. From the end of this lap to lap uh, 9, uh, mediums laps uh, 7 to lap 10, hards lap 9 to lap 12. You know, these tires aren't really lasting that long, and Chima's gotten ahead of Jin. Oh, I missed that move! But yeah, up into P2 goes the second tire also of Chima, and he must have just made that move then and there. And I regret missing that, that move. And Jacob Stevens gets ahead of Ruben up into P9. Goes the current leading you know, Ferrari car. And running on board with David as we head into the Parabolica. He's going to try and go around the outside, but now he has to break. So then Ruben doesn't hit him. That's definitely not a safe move to make. But he's going to have DRS even though he's... He's over a second behind. It's not going to be close enough to close in. And Ruben goes down the inside on, J on Jacob Stevens. But Stevens comes back at him. I'm like, no, you don't. You wait. Wait 
and stay there. And he is going to stay there for a bit. Because in this next chicane, it's the tightest part of the entire track. To make an overtake here would be suicide. And Ruben knows it, so he hasn't made the pass. And that's UJ sliding through the Ascari chicanes. 56% tire wear. I won't be shocked if he comes into this on this lap. Uh, Jin tries to close in on Chimera. He's not too close. Meanwhile, uh, Ruben gets past that lead Ferrari. And has UJ come into this? No, he's staying out for another lap. Okay, so that's a bit of an odd decision to make, in my opinion. I would have come into the pits because Chima and Jin are closing in fast as Rishab and Josh come into the pits on this lap. And they're not the only ones. You've got David coming in. Ferrari, they've got the first pit box being, the, I guess, the first team in the driver select. I don't know. Uh, Jomi's also coming to the pits on this lap. And it's a t and it's to medium tires, and this only promotes Riley up into twentieth place, behind Josh and cru crucially behind his own teammate in on lap eight. Uche is going farther than some medium tire runners right now. This is a risky move on fifty percent tire. Oh, uh, Chima almost hitting the wall coming out of Ascari. Yeah, we're going to take a look at Simeon. Yeah, everyone's grazing the wall. Coming through that turn, almost cutting the corner with the amount of speed that they carry through there. And the FIA have said that it's fine to cut to do a bit of a track. And uh, they understand that they can't keep all the wheels on the ground as Chima comes into the pits on lap 9. Uche is trying to go farther than some medium tire runners right now. Uh, Ruben also coming in and on this lap. The soft tires should have, have hit their peak. And yet, on the time in Sour, UJ is still putting in some okay lap times. They're not setting the world on fire, but he doesn't need to. He already has the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Someone who does need to get a move on is Alex. He's on 48% tire wear. He's got a 5 second time penalty. Which will be added on to the end of the race. And at half race distance, it does seem like Mercedes is trying to do a one stop strategy. Other teams looking at a potential two stopper. But I would say that the one stop is potentially faster if you can make those softs go all the way. And he almost goes over the curb at the Parabolica. And he comes into the pits on lap 10. Of 18, Uche, our race leader, comes in then for Mercedes, which will allow Jun to take the lead of the Italian Grand Prix. He, Simeon stays out. No, he comes in. Lap 10. This is the crossover point in, where you need to come into the pits. It seems Sars also coming in on this lap. It's for medium compound tyres. Uh, Gregory, Callum, both come in. Uh, let's see who else is going to come in. Angela as well. And that's a three-way fight. For now, uh, P11 in between. No, P10. As as uh, Josh gets that P10 position in from Kieran fighting in a hard between. Uh, it's a hard all on fight between the three drivers of Josh, Rishab, and Kieran. For that position and Nuche's only dropped down to P3. Uh, let's see what tires he's on right now. I'd say it's probably the mediums. It is mediums, and he's closing in on a yarn with, with, with quite a lot of speed. It, and that's some speed that you wouldn't really expect from a medium compound of tires. He might even be sizing up a move coming into turn one, but that would be a pretty dangerous move in the background. You can See, Jacob Stevenson, we've got a safety car. This is going to bunch the field back up. As Jin comes into the pits on this lap, this is a strategic masterclass from, for the second Mercedes driver. Let's see where he's going to come out. Is he going to be behind his teammate or ahead?
He's ahead, isn't he? He's come out ahead of his teammate. Now, why is there a safety guy in the first place? I, I'm trying to look, and it's for Sebastian. Ah, oh, that's definitely Adeskari. He's going to need to be coming into the pits. He does have, have the time to come into the pits on this lap and keep on going. It's the smart thing to do. He's on 9% car damage. So he peels into the pits now. Five, four, three, two, and one. He comes into the pits. And he's retired in the pit lane. What has happened with that? Uh, uh, McLaren, he's retired at pit row. And Arna was the guy who came into the pits with the Sebastian teammate Kieran. Oh, that's just terrible to see. Oh, I haven't been this disappointed since Shrek 3. That's such a shame to see one of the drivers taken out through something that very easily could have been not their fault. And we've got Team Radio from Uche. Am I second now? Uh, yes, Suche, you're second right now behind your teammate. He's he's overcut me, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Ah, oh, he's benefited from this. The safety car, I'm telling you, this, this is very fair. You understand, Uche? Just keep pushing. As it stands... You're not closing on Riley. You're going to close in on him as well. But neither of you are going to overtake him. No matter how this plays out. This isn't great, you guys. Lap cars may now overtake the safety car, but there are still no lap cars in this race, even though it is lap 13.
Safety car is going to be coming in at the end of this lap. So we're going to begin lap 14 then. With. While well, on board with Jun. With his teammate right behind him. We're actually going to go on board with Uche now. And he's going to come across the line then. To start. The 14th lap of 18. Here in Italy. We go green again. And already Jin blasts off into the distance. And pulling out already. Two seconds on his own teammate. And down the inside tries to go on there. It's a close move. Hot and fast. But just not close enough to actually take second place away from him. And he's still going to be there through the curve of Grande. But he has to slot in behind. And through the chicane. But yeah, Jin getting a great getaway at the restart of this Italian Grand Prix. The skies have darkened over uh, uh, Monza currently. Uh, this also gives Riley a new chance to try and get into the points, salvage something from his terrible qualifying and the unfortunate damage received to his car. But we'll see what happens. Throughout the rest of this race, there won't be any DRS on this first lap. We're running on board with Jun. Great start from him. Meanwhile, further down the order, Jomi trying to get past that Gregory that in the P17. He's he's gonna try and do it going into parabolic. He's just not close enough to do it. If Riley though gets past trying to get past Arnav and he almost makes it. So into the first turn we go again. Riley on board with they are trying to take the inside line, but knows he's just not. Close enough to make it through. So through Curva Grande, we're about to go. Turn three. Closing in. Best you can. And it's a 10-second tie penalty for Sars. As he spins. Loses his front wing. He's got a corner cut. And he's caused the collision. It's a yellow flag. It's sector one. And it's been cleared immediately. But he's lost part of his front wing. He's going to fall down the order. And have a 10 second time penalty to it. At that point, you might as well have him just, just retired from the Grand Prix. Lap 15, then. Uche, he ooh, dropped off quite a bit from his own teammate there. But just remember, Jun is on soft tyres. They will go faster, but not for longer. As he's coming around now is Jun to begin at lap 16. Those stops will go off the cliff. We saw that with Uche earlier. And he's going to need to pit uh, before Uche. Because that safety car when we start would have allowed Uche to retain some wear on those tyres. As, yes, yeah, Sars coming into the pits now. And it's soft tyres, as it should be. Two laps from the finish. If you're going to need to make a pit stop, then, yeah, go for softs. Try and take the first lap if you can. But Born GP having quite the awful season so far. Bottom of the standings for a team that, at last season won the championship. Running on board with Jin. Coming through a scary, that's a pretty good entry and exit. Now where they are trying to close in on Uche, he's just not close enough to do it. Meanwhile, Alex, he's got a five second time penalty over his head. This will drop him down to P8 right now. What he needs to do is gain some ground on our current leaders. And to do that, he needs to get past this Jacob Stevens with it within the next two laps. So on lap 17 of 18, Jin still leads, Uche still second, Aeon still third, but let's see if Alex can get up into P4 through the first chicane, we'll go, and he's not close enough to even close in. Uh, Chimurai, by the way, he's dropped down to P7, not a great thing to happen at your team's home race, but hey, it's great that your teammate's still going to be on the podium, but Ferrari still does want to He's that podium pie. Right on board with Jim. He's on 72% tire wear. 
this Monza track isn't really that hard on its tires. On its tires, just, despite the cars being very fast. I'm sorry for that little break in my speech, which I thought I thought my Wii was on. Yeah, I get it. Not funny. But yeah, through a scary we go again, and Alex closing in very quickly on that Ferrari. He can't even dampen Ferrari's parade. He's going to go down the inside of Parabolic. He's not going to have DRS on the next spot because he gets passed up into P4. It's not going to last as we begin the final lap of the Grand Prix. Jin Lee, Zuchi second day on. Then an Alex fourth. And Jacob Stevens gets passed with DRS. Who would have seen that coming up? Was literally out of nowhere. And Charlie's trying to close in on this. Slow battle as well. And Jin now says the fastest first sector of anybody. An entire second and a half quicker than Uche's first attempt. I'm riding on board with Alex. He's trying to close in on that Ferrari. Pretty much everyone is on medium tires, and if not, they are on softs. That's only a few new drivers side by side, and ahead goes Jack. Like Rishab trying to close in to take P10 in the final point scoring position. But this doesn't seem to be Neo's there. He may have qualified in fourth place, but he's already dropped down to P11 as Alec as Charlie now sets to the fastest second sector of anybody. By three tenths of a second. And Riley sets it. Jin now sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix and wins the Italian Grand Prix. It's just gonna come home. Second place in the tower, five seconds down up, and a yard third, but down the inside goes Riley on Callum to take P14 at Parabolica. But there could be a DRS overtake or two who come the end of this race. And unfortunately for Alex, he's going to drop outside of the points. He's going to drop down to around P17. In P15, sorry. But yeah, through the Parabolica we go with Zahas then. To end this Italian Grand Prix. Here we are at the podium then. A double podium for Mercedes. He's, and I do believe it's the first win of his career then. For the driver who stayed at Mercedes for the longest time. Jean wins the Italian Grand Prix. Uche second. That strategy call helping Jean out more than it helped Uche. And he on third. He could have gone in for second place on the podium today. Which he really didn't have the pace. So here's your finishing order then. It's Uche, it's Jin who wins from Uche then Aon. Then it's Jacob Stevens and Charlie and Chimak. Joshua seventh. Simeon ne Simeon eighth. Alex only drops down to P9 then with Jack tenth. Rishab eleventh. David twelfth. Ruben 13th, Riley 14th, Callum 15th, Arnav 16th, and Jola 17th, Gregory 18th, Kieran 19th, Jommy 10th, Sars, uh, Jommy, tw Jommy 20th, Sars 21st, and your non finisher was Sebastian. In the driver standings, well, with that DNF, Sebastian could, have, could not have taken any points there. But it's a tie for the driver's standings lead. Between Riley and Jen, both on 120 points. Then it's Uche on 103. Then Chimera on 75. Gregory on 70 on 66. Then it's Ayan on 41. Then it's Simeon on 36. Followed closely by Arnav on 35. Then it's Charlie on 31. Then David on 26. Followed by his own teammate, Jacob Stevens, on 24 points. Then Kieran on Ka and Callum tied on 23 points. Then it's Jommy on 22 points. Jack on 15, tied with Alex. Then it's Joshua on 14 points. It's Ruben on 11 points. Richard on 10 points. Sars on 4 points. And Jola on a single solitary point. With the aforementioned Sebastian on no points at all. In the constructors standings, heading into the Dutch Grand Prix. Well, Mercedes you still hold the lead down on 223 points. Same amount of subscribers I have. That's cool. Then it's next EV Neo 333 BMW on 130. Then Toro Honda coming home from their home race on 116 points. 
Then it's Red Bull. Then it's Renault Dams on 81 points. Then it's Red Bull Honda on 54 points. Then BMW HWA Race Lab on Apex Grand Prix. And Scuderia Ferrari, a three-way tie for sixth place. All of them on 50 points. Then it's Faraday Future Dragon Mercedes and McLaren Mercedes, both on 23 points. Then in last place, Braun Diaz Mercedes on a lowly 15 points. We'll see you next time with a Dutch Grand Prix.